It will. We actually have some more space to do with it uh, later on, and it's a little bit easier than that. Um, I'll show you here in just a second. So, I'll show you this one here. This is a uh, TFTP two. Um, same stuff at the top. Same stuff there. But you'll see our commented out the uh, pattern create, and I've got the target dot red pack v. This means go up here, get the target's return address, and pack it little Indian style. That's the way that the uh, processor will look at it. It basically inverses it, puts it backwards. Uh, so it, it's just easier to write it this way. And then uh, you'll see I add, so here it is. This is the crash, A times 256. Here's where I want it to uh, return to. And then 43 is the letter C times 250. So I'm going to throw in 250 C's, see where they end up. See if it's an easier place for me to go, uh, to jump to, to, uh, to read the shell code. And I believe, again, if the demo gods small upon me. Because I don't think you understand. I hate doing live demos. <laughs> and I made fun of Adrian for doing a live demo. And now my videos that I set up so I wouldn't have to do a live demo don't forget. As soon as it reaches that address, it pauses execution. 
uh, and allows you to step through step by step. So I can run the program, send my uh, crash. I don't have to step through it processing every A, let it process all that stuff, get to my return address, and I say, hey, when EIP calls this address, which is where our jump ESP will be, stop executing. I want to go through it step by step, make sure it drops me right into the beginning of my shell code, or do I need to put no ops, meaning do I need to put about 20 no ops because it jumps randomly in the beginning of my shell code somewhere, and I want it to slide down. Um, so that's why we're going to test the return. Let's break some stuff. Let's pop the box. Woo. All right, so let's see, this is... Now that we've got a crash program here, we're going to load up all of the uh, modules that are uh, being executable right now. And I like user 32. So let's go to user 32. We're going to do search for. It's actually readable too. It's very exciting. We're going to type in, you guys can't tell I've done this before, jump ESP. And we found one. At, and it's at, that's not easy to read. 7E429353. It's an address in memory. So we go back, and we plug that into where we had the 42424242. We replace it with that address. So that says, instead of trying to jump to 42424242, which I used as just to make sure I was in the right spot, jump to this jump ESP instruction in user32.dll. So that's what you see here. There's the return address we just found, and this is going to jump. This is going to tell it jump there. Yo, the uh, address you just found right there is that basically the same thing as the four two crash point? Okay, the four two. The only reason I use four two, it, does, it has nothing to do with the crash other than I used it to make sure that I was going to the right place. You use it as a marker. It's a marker, exactly. That's what it is. The place that you mark that that four two is that basically the same concept. Yeah, this is just this is the instruction. 4.2 was not an instruction, or it was not a place where an instruction existed. It was an easy for me to look at it and go, okay, I'm in the right spot. My, my offset for my crash is correct. It is going to the right place here, and I saw that my the rest of my code was being inserted. So, um, yes, this... This is basically just an instruction. This just says, hey, I want you to do something now rather than crashing, stopping, and not going anywhere. Because 424242 didn't exist, and so it crashed and said, hey, I can't read memory access, you know, 4242, So it, it's something easy for you to see when you're dealing with a crash, and that's just something I do. That's, there's nothing saying you have to do it that way. Have you used any uh, jump instruction with ESP? You're studying ESP in any way you can, right? Yeah, yeah. In this case, I just used jump ESP from user 32 DLL. So um, many of them, it doesn't matter which one you use. Yeah, it, well, as long as it gets to ESP, and the most direct route was jump ESP, but there are other instructions that's way more advanced than I'm going to get into in this uh, presentation. But for this example, yes, jump ESP was not only easy to find, it worked, and it got us there with very little fuss. So, so using the 4242 to just find the spot where you want to input it. Exactly. It has, it has nothing to do with the crash past that point. Yeah. It's just making sure that EIP is being overwritten with the correct, or that I'm in the correct spot to overwrite EIP. We had a guy in the green shirt here and back there both and asked questions. <laughs> Answer my meeting. How does address-based randomization affect us? I will get to that at the end. It definitely plays a part, but in this exa and for this example, I didn't want to get into that. That's way, way more advanced than what we're dealing with here. But it will, it will definitely mess things up. I was going to ask, that 70 address, that's actually your user 32, that's not in the TFT program, right? No, no, that's part of Windows. That's part, that's part of, of that's, and that's why I went to it, because it's so prior to address space randomization, it's, in the, it's going to be in the same spot every time. Right, well, okay, but you're assuming that they're on the same version of Windows. Exactly. This is heavily dependent on this for Not only is it dependent on this version, it's dependent on this language pack. It is dependent on many, many things. This, this exploit is crap. This thing will not work very, very many places, but it demonstrates a point. It gets you guys started. It gets you understanding the very basic parts of exploit development. So, um, yes, let's do that. Restart the program. 
Actually, I need to put in my jump point.